And good evening everyone. We begin here at 530 tonight with this federal criminal complaint against a man from Erie County, 53 year old Matthew Steele of Elma. It charges him with producing and distributing child pornography. Investigators say the crimes date back more than a decade, and it is how they cracked this case all those years later that we really want to dig into tonight. This investigation actually started back on January 25th of last year with the Queensland Police Service in Australia. Officers identified 47 images showing a young girl being sexually exploited. This was reported to Interpol and law enforcement worldwide. And you fast forward then to September 12th of last year in Fairfax, Virginia. It's where a criminal analyst with Homeland Security did a visual analysis on the photos and found out what camera and lens were used to create them. That officer also tracked the metadata showing that these images dated back to early 2013. So a short time later, that analyst used facial recognition technology and then was able to match the girl in those old photos with Facebook and Instagram pictures of a woman who is now 24 years old and lives in Great Falls, Montana. Law enforcement there were able to interview that young woman. She told investigators graphic details of the abuse that she says happened in Elma here in our region at the home of the suspect Matthew Steele. Federal agents executed a search warrant at his home on Monday of this week. He was there during that search. They say some of his decor actually matched what was in those pictures from more than a decade ago and that they found the camera and the lens that matched the metadata on the photos. Joining us live here tonight is Steve McMartin, Program Director of Cybersecurity at Hilbert College. He spent more than three decades as a federal law enforcement officer investigating computer crimes. Steve, good to see you. Thanks for talking to us about this. Sure, thanks for having me. So I spent some time today going through, uh, and I know you have as well, the, the criminal complaint here, about a dozen pages. Extremely graphic, as, as these cases often are. This one really stands out, though, at, at just the efforts law enforcement went into um, to be able to solve an awful crime like this, or, or at least to get it to the point of an arrest. Your thoughts about how this played out? Well, I mean, they did a great job. Um, they used uh, all the tools at their disposal, um, and uh, uh, it's not something I've not seen before. They're, they, uh, uh, it's something that uh, I've done many times when uh, I was working, and uh, I was not surprised to see the effort they put into it, and uh, I was glad to see the outcome. When we talk about facial recognition, I think that's part of what made this news here and, and a lot of outlets have picked up this story elsewhere. Um, I, we all know how facial recognition works, right? At least the basics of it. But here they were able to use that technology to match pictures of this victim when she was very young with pictures of her now on Facebook and Instagram. I don't know that, that we were aware that that something like that was possible. Um, that, I know it's something that doesn't surprise you, right? No, I'm not surprised. Um, I, I think the first thing you have to realize is that, uh, you know, the, the facial recognition isn't something that's run against a database that uh, the government keeps. That's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of Big Brother. Um, that's not something that happened. Um, uh, facial recognition is, though it, it is a science, it's a technique that's run against uh, open databases of, of software of pictures and it's uh you know openly available software that's used uh, by the government um, in this case um, to aid in an investigation um, what's unique in this case is that it was um you know pictures that were able to match you know uh the younger uh person with um uh pictures of a person that had aged and they were able to match up um, um, that person so that they were able to identify um, the person who had since moved, as we learned in the, uh, in the uh, complaint, um, and then bring it back to the location where the suspect was still living. And that was, uh, you know, well done. Yeah, finally, I'm almost out of time here, but I want to ask you, I think we had three child pornography federal arrests just over the past couple of days just here in Western New York. I mean, this just seems ubiquitous, but it also shows us that law enforcement take this very seriously. 
Yeah, it, 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 it happens under the radar a lot of times. Uh, I worked many, 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 many cases uh, that you never heard of, and it continues and it continues to this day. I'm sure there's been all sorts of cases that you don't hear of, uh, but it does seem to happen in waves sometimes. I don't know why, it's just the nature of the beast. And in this case, again, uh, alleged conduct from a long time ago, catching up with this suspect who is innocent until proven guilty, but will follow the case. Former Homeland Security official, now Hilbert College professor Steve McMartin. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Yep, thank you.